All right, folks, welcome back to Hapes or Games. Today's review is Graven 1.0, which released yesterday on Steam. It's been in early access for a very, very long time. Now, I've been purposely avoiding getting any early access titles anymore until they fully release. This one was in the pipe a long, long time. And if you look at the Steam reviews from the early access follow on, uh, a lot of the reviews are mixed. As I've played maybe six hours as of release at this stage, I just think maybe somebody was expecting one game when in reality this one is another. And I actually think this is a fantastic game and I'm going to tell you why. So let's start out first with the visual design here. It actually kind of thematically reminds me of a blend of Hexen, if anyone remembers that FPS game of the past, and Dark Souls in a way. I really like the gothic kind of horror style feel to it. I also really like the lighting and the level geometry. Some of the level design here is really, really well done. And briefly back to the point I made about the game looking like Hexen, I think this might have been its not so much as marketing issue, but on front face value when people look at this game, I think they were expecting a Hexen game through and through, when in reality this is not a Hexen game at all really. It's more of a thinking man's FPS game and what I mean is be prepared to not have your hand holded in this game. This game Actually, it's nearly a blend of Metroid in a way, plus an FPS, and a little bit of Dark Souls thrown in there to boot. And again, I'm going to repeat the point, this game does not hold your hand. You need to genuinely be paying attention. You need to be reading the notes. You need to be taking guidance from your inventory and the notes you've taken uh, in order to complete the objectives. And you can get these objectives uh, from the town folk in the kind of map slash hood area. There is no fast travel in this either. So that's another thing. You need to move from area to area. And if you have to travel back, you gotta go all the way back. Again, that's more of that akin to Metroid feel to it. And if you're generally not paying attention, you're expecting a, a waypoint to tell you where to go. That is not what you're gonna get here. Personally speaking, I actually applaud this design choice. There's been a huge influx in what we now call as boomer shooters. Even Steam has a genre called boomer shooters now on its platform. And again, I think maybe there might be a little bit of oversaturation at the moment. So this really was something fresh that was coming from 3D Realms that wasn't actually a boomer shooter. And don't get me wrong, I absolutely love my boomer shooter games, but there's a lot in the market right now. So it was nice to be able to play something different coming out of that publisher. And what I mean by a thinking man's FPS is you have a combination of melee attacks, weapons and magic, and it's all combined. And what I, what I like about the combat system here is it actually the combat is more effective when you mix up your spells and your melee attacks and or your ranged attacks and use them together magic isn't just exclusively used for combat it's also used in part of the puzzle solving and in this case here you open the gate by using your electrocution attack but back to the combat, overall I feel it's very satisfying, visceral, but at the same time you get the best out of it by combining your weapons and using them to attack the enemy and not just sticking with a single weapon. So combining your lightning attack with your fletch it or using, setting someone on fire and then killing them with the sword. You could almost say that it takes certain influences from Bioshock, one of my favorite games in that regard. And then you can upgrade your weapons, so you can upgrade your melee weapons, you can upgrade your ranged weapons and or your magic back in the town. And you do this by using gold. Gold can be found from doing actual jobs, missions. It can actually be found from secrets within the game themselves and or kind of smashing up everything. It's got a bit of a looter feel to it as well, thrown in there in the mix, which I actually really like. It's really addictive. It's got that old school kind of Half-Life feel in a way. If anyone remembers the original Half-Life, you always went mad with the crowbar smashing up boxes. It's got that kind of feel to it as well. And again, you never know what's behind the box. You can get, you know, mana for your magic. You can get coins, as I mentioned already, or you can get ammunition. Now, I do want to expand on what I meant earlier by this has a Dark Souls slash Metroidvania 
kind of style, you're going to find a lot of locked doors in areas. Again, unlocking these areas actually unlocks shortcuts. And ultimately what you'll find is one big interconnected map like you would Metroid or Dark Souls. And the puzzles, as I said, some of them can be a little bit obscure. That might be off-putting for some people. So you really, really, really have to be paying attention. As I said before, reading everything and when you see something come up on the screen, don't just tap the button, actually read it. For argument's sake, it took me ages to figure this out, but this key had to be actually used underwater explicitly. And if you don't read the information from when you pick the key up, you wouldn't actually know this. So again, really to reiterate, the game does not hold your hand and you do have to be paying attention. Don't expect a big waypoint telling you where to go. This is absolutely not what you're gonna get here. So we've covered visual design, we've covered the overall gameplay elements, how the game is actually structured, but the one thing I did want to cover next is the actual difficulty level. Again, it taken some influences from Dark Souls in a way, because there's spawn points, now you don't necessarily light bonfires like you would in Dark Souls, but there's frequent checkpoints that you will get. And basically, if you die, you will spawn at those checkpoints and you're also punished for death. It's a fairly hefty punishment too, maybe 200 to 250 coins. And that can be a lot, especially if you're aiming towards upgrades. So basically spend your coins when you get them. Uh, don't hang on to them too long. Something similar that you maybe would see when you talk about souls and dark souls. I kind of was rushed into this area here. I got a bit cocky and I started thinking I was gonna take them all out, but I ended up getting uh, stabbed in the back, basically, or clubbed in the back by a pretty big guy, ended up dying and I lost 250 coins for it. Got into a rage when I did it. it was my own fault really I should have been slower in my approach so yeah it, it's I suppose to move away as well from the thought process that this is a boomer shooter by trade it absolutely isn't as well uh, you need to be using your brain when you're going into fights and planning your attacks now there is one main gripe I have with this as well if you save and quit out of the game it ends up putting you back in the town so you have to kind of travel to the area that you were now I, I know that's all an interconnected hub a fast travel system or some form for checkpoints that you've already accessed would have made sense here to me but I think what they're going for really was um, to bring you back to the town possibly if you needed to carry out some additional upgrades or get new missions or tasks but I, th I, I do feel that maybe a, a travel system once you've gotten to a certain point would have been maybe a better choice uh, design wise here but other than that I suppose that's my main gripe um, nothing major beyond that I, I'm honestly having so much fun playing this game and each new area I explore and overall I highly recommend this game if you have a PC and it's you know it's fresh I didn't want to play another boomer shooter I'm glad that it's not it's 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 good to be able to play something different uh, if you've played Graven let me know down in the comments what you think do you agree or disagree with me if you're new to the channel please consider supporting my work by subscribing I'll talk to you later guys thanks for watching